I was sitting in the kitchen when Lorelai came crashing in with a wild look in her eyes. I began to fold up my newspaper, but before I could put it down, she was already in my face, brandishing a tooth mere inches from my nose. I'm scared, she cried, holding it up in the light. It just fell out, all by itself. What do I do? There was blood on the tips of her fingers where she'd pinched it. I could see, between them, the hair-like shock of gum that still held fast to the tooth's root like some mossy growth. The meat was still shiny and wet. Carefully, I took the tooth from her, scanned it, and chuckled. <laughs> no need to worry, dear. Your body is changing, that's all. Changing? Lorelei huffed. What do you mean, changing? Well, darling, I began. Everyone's body changes as they grow. Some of us have it easier than others, of course. But we all experience many of the same things. You've lost teeth before. It just took this one a little longer to wiggle its way out. I set the tooth on the tabletop and smiled at her. You'll be okay, I promise. Lorelai, though, was inconsolable. She looked at me as though I'd betrayed her, guffawed, and though she tried to follow it with words, each one was choked out by a shuddering intake of air. Eventually, the tears along the lids of her eyes spilled over and she turned away, dashing back off into the house to hide and console herself as she always did. I didn't dare follow. Not yet, at least. Lorelai was a strong-willed girl, one that demanded to find her own way, even if she did ask so many questions. If I followed her now, she'd be irate. She'd throw a tantrum and not listen to a word I said for days. So I took the tooth instead, peeled off what gum I could, and pocketed it before returning to the day's news and my drink. The television droned on somewhere far off in our home. Another day, another string of disappearances. Another storm approaching. Days later, I was scrubbing the last dishes in the sink when I heard Lorelai scream. I dropped the dishes and began to move, calling out after her. I found her in the bathroom, the door slightly ajar. The whitish light leaking out into the cold hallway. Lorelai, dear, don't come in, she shrieked. She threw her body against the door and it snapped shut. I heard her clatter to the floor on the other side, sobbing. Lorelai, I need you to open the door for me. I don't want to, she cried. I don't want you to come near me at all. I gripped the knob and twisted, only to feel it resist. I pressed my hand against the door softly. But Lorelai, I just want to make sure that you're okay. Okay? Of course I'm not okay. I'm... I'm scared. I shushed her softly, lowering myself into a squat, centering my face near the door as though it weren't there at all. There's no need to be scared, Lorelai. I told you before... Anything that is happening to you, these changes that you're experiencing, they're all natural. I paused, but only heard sobbing on the other side. I sighed and continued. The best thing for you to do in these situations, though, is to let me see what's wrong. If it's something preventable... We can look into ways to prevent it. Even natural transitions can be scary. I understand that. But sometimes there are ways to at least help diminish the problem. The door lock suddenly clicked, and the white light shredded out into the dark. I thumped backwards, and there she was, towering over me, her eyes wide with a mixture of horror and anger. She jabbed a finger toward her face and screamed. Do you think you can help this? Do you think this is a problem we can prevent? 
Her face was covered in a mass of boils and blisters, all of them plump and red and glistening with sweat. Her eyes were crowned in them, her lips swollen with them, and they stretched behind her ears and down her throat and up into her hairline. Her teeth flashed like daggers between them as she cried. I pulled myself up on my feet and hesitated before reaching out and pulling her clothes. Lorelai didn't fight, but she didn't return the gesture. She just hovered in my grip, her body shuddering, her cries doubling and redoubling for what felt like a small eternity. When at last her cries gave way to exhausted sobs, I took her carefully by the arm and walked her down the hall. Together we found her bed in the dark, and I urged her beneath the blankets. I told her, again, that she'd be okay. I told her not to be scared. I watched until her eyes fluttered beneath their lids, her mind ferried to dreamland by the melodic drone of sirens far off in the distance. Gradually, Lorelai left her room less and less. Where she used to steal away into the living room to watch the news or sneak into the kitchen to raid the fridge, she now only braved the few feet that she had to cover to reach the bathroom and go back. Though in time, even that stopped. When I would hear her, I would hover near the door, listening as carefully and quietly as I could. Sometimes she would be mumbling to herself. Other times she would just quietly weep. But no matter what I did, whether through the bedroom door or the bathroom door or face to face in the hall, she refused to speak to me. Lorelai only met me with disdain, her eyes boring through me until I made way and she slinked slowly back into the confines of her darkened room. When it had been a week since I'd seen her, I knew the time was drawing near. On the night of the ninth day, I heard her low moans, her hoarse cries, from beyond the bedroom door. I knew the time had finally come. When I pushed my way in, I was met by a stench of shit and sweat and unwashed skin. The sole lamp on the far side of the room was on its side, though its light still cascaded up the purple wall and across the white molding. The vanity mirror was shattered, showered across the carpeting and mixed among the strewn piles of clothing. There were nail marks scraped in the paint on the walls. The window, too, had been broken. The warm southern air billowed in through the bars, only pushing the stench into every corner of the room. But the thing that dominated the room, the thing I couldn't take my eyes off, was Lorelei. She had swallowed the corner of the room. Each arm, each leg, stretched a different direction. Each webbed in an almost translucent silk and burrowing into the floor or the wall or the ceiling. Already the shell of the chrysalis had started to fill out the spaces in between them. Its blue-green sheen ribbed like molded jade pockmarked by flashes of red and yellow and orange and aimless spatters. Her eyes met mine before swooning, orbiting the room and finding mine again. Her tongue danced behind her graying lips. She tried to form words, but all that came out was a sort of forced hiss, rising and dropping with each breath. Her skin sloughed off like dust. Her moaning was almost hypnotic, matching the subtle gyrations of her body. I stood in awe, minute by minute, more skin becoming shell, more shell covering her up. Lorelei, my wife. Fifty years old, considerably older than the others, but the only one to make it this far. And as the last of her face was swallowed by the cocoon, I promised her she would be okay. As her cries were squelched by the spinning silk, I marveled at how amazing she was, at how proud I was of my work, and perhaps 
above all, at how the body changes. And, as if in agreement, the storm cracked outside and the rain itself began to fall. It's been weeks. I've been staring at Lorelei every day, tracing the curvature that swallowed her body and wondering what's within, but it's remained a secret. I'll admit, I even thought she died once or twice, what with the face of the cocoon blackening and the thrum from within stuttering on occasion, and sometimes falling eerily silent. But then, today happened. I walked into the room and, to my surprise, saw the first of many cracks along the cocoon's edge. I can see shapes beneath it now, a slender hand, a needle-like leg, the grand sweeping slopes of folded wings. I had to hold back tears as the fullness of the thing finally dawned on me. I, a mere old man, succeeded in creating an angel. And now that I've perfected the science with the help of my Lorelei, I will bring this gift to our suffering world, one woman at a time. Hi there. Hope you enjoyed The Body Changes by Maxwell Malone. I just wanted to take a moment to say a big thank you to everyone who stops by the channel and who watches the videos and listens to all the audio uh, projects that I create. It's, it's always really nice to see people engage you know, with the content and, uh, and to enjoy it so much and to get all that positive feedback is always a nice thing and it's very much appreciated because guys like me, we put a lot of effort into this stuff, you know, voice actors, producers, it's, it's a huge job, and, uh, and it's really, really nice when, uh, when people enjoy what we do. I also wanted to say a really big thank you, specifically, for 8,000 subscribers on the channel. That's just a huge number of people for me. That's, I can't even imagine what 8,000 people altogether looks like. Um, this is, uh, we're coming up on my fifth year here on YouTube, uh, in, in April it'll be my fifth year, and really my fifth year of, of being a voice actor and a producer, and, um, you know, this channel has not been a runaway success by any means, but it, you know, it's got a small following of people who, who really enjoy uh, what I do and and that's all I could ever ask for really. I've never wanted to be a big competitor with with the uh, The other channels out there. I, it's this is a place for me to showcase my work and for you to enjoy it if you want and Leave it if you don't You know I was talking about the fact that the, that the channel's kind of small um, with my partner Violet and she she said, you know it, Yeah, you know, you know, it's not it's not huge, but at the same time you know, it's five years of, of you developing your skills and, and learning new things and getting to where you are. And really, that's, for me, that's that's exactly right. She's exactly right. And that's, that's what it's all really been about this whole time. Um, you know, th thanks to oral stimulation, I've... I've I found Chilling Tales for Dark Nights and had, a, had so much growth and opportunities there to, to kind of really dig deep into uh, the production side of things and uh, and the voice acting side of things too. I got to do lots of projects there and work with a really great team and you know that evolved into uh, my work with the No Sleep Podcast who I work with now who is guilty. It's, it's all their fault why you're not seeing very much content on the channel these days. Um, I'm just so busy working. We're on season 10. Uh, we're about halfway through it more than halfway through it you know it, it takes almost all my time aside from the day job and everything but i wouldn't trade it for anything because it's i'm still getting to do what i love to do um and get paid for it now which is awesome and uh you know that brings me to a whole new project i want to tell you about it's actually a nice little coincidence that i presented you a maxwell malone story today 
because Max works as part of the writing team over at the Congeria podcast. Now, for those of you who don't know, a brand new podcast called Congeria has just released uh, just at the end of February, and uh, we're heading into episode four now. And uh, that is brought to you by voice actor Atticus Jackson from the No Sleep podcast, as well as the writer Henry Galley, whose work you've heard here on the channel, and he's also a regular contributor to the No Sleep podcast and the No Sleep subreddit. And uh, those two guys got together and they decided they were going to create a detective noir uh, kind of story told in the 21st century New York. So it's got this multiple genres. There's a little bit of sci-fi. There's a little bit of supernatural. I won't spoil anything. Um, and a really solid crew. It's produced by Phil Mykolski, who works with me on the No Sleep podcast. It stars Atticus Jackson, myself, uh, Addison Peacock, Aaron Lillis. Um, there's cameos in there from Dan Sapula, uh, David Alt, James Cleveland, a whole slew of really amazingly talented voice actors that you'll recognize mostly from the No Sleep podcast. There's some other newcomers too as well. And I got to tell you, the caliber of talent that has gone into this podcast is not to be missed. It's a fantastic uh, serialized podcast. Each season is its own self-contained story. And, uh, and I get to play a character who is introduced in this upcoming, upcoming episode, uh, episode four. He's, he's been name dropped a whole bunch. His name's Harry Resnick. But you're going to get to meet him for the first time this Tuesday, actually. So if you haven't checked it out, highly recommend it. Find Congeria Podcast, C-O-N-G-E-R-I-A, on iTunes. Uh, it's on Spotify. It's actually available on the horror streaming service Shudder. Um, if you use the promo code Congeria, C-O-N-G-E-R-I-A, you can actually get a free month uh, trial with that. And uh, that's where they also host their mini-sodes, which are these kind of in-between episode mini episodes which kind of delve deep into one of the characters and uh my character also gets to to have one of those mini episodes which is really cool and i highly recommend it it's it's really high quality production great music uh from brandon boone and phil mikalski and uh and a really solid cast and the story itself is really exciting You've, it's, it's a little bit familiar and also entirely new at the same time. So check that out and, uh, you know, make sure you drop some reviews off in the iTunes review section. Give it a star rating. Five stars would be fantastic, obviously, if you like it that much. Um, that really helps out the show. All right. Well, I'm going to stop blathering on. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening. Thank you for subscribing thank you for listening it's it's always appreciated and uh and i'm always happy to share you know what i can do with people it's it's a real joy to do this and thank you for 8,000 subscribers i i'm so happy that there's that many of you people to share all of this with all right take care cheers cheers